Um, my name is Jeff Smith. I'm from Missoula. I'm the co-chair of 350 Montana. Um, and um, this summer I had the, I guess it was a pleasure, of reading uh, Michael Malone's The Battle for Butte. And he um, talked about the, the vast the process of concentrating all of the um, um, mining companies into um, what we came to know as the Anaconda. Um, company and the results um, in public process were, were disastrous for Montana for a long time. And I really appreciate your work as a consumer council in response to that history. And I look forward to, in the future to you continuing this process, to helping us make decisions. And the billion dollar question right now for all of us in Montana is what do we do for the next generation of power? Um, in order to make that decision, we need data, and you're doing a really good job, it looks like, from what I observed this morning, of, of collecting the data on the costs of um, this future energy, the um, procurement that we're going to need for the next generation. Um, but I would like you to consider um, some of the external costs of fossil fuels, um, and I would like you to consider um, that these external costs are go going to be more and more severe, as my colleagues have, have explained. And I, I, I would recommend that you do some reading, that you read that Montana climate assessment, um, and that you understand that, that these, the best mines in Montana are predicting a rise in temperatures by 2100 of 14 degrees Fahrenheit with vast um, impacts on our agriculture and our recreation and our timber industries. Um, and the second study that I think is very important to look at right now is the one done by uh, the Montana Farmers Union where it looks at the effects of rising temperatures on agriculture and the hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of but the, I'm, I'm going to get the numbers I'm mixed up here, but the vast costs to not only grain growers, but also cattle farmers. About what, this is coming down the line if we don't do something about adjusting our fossil fuels. Um, and the third study is the Montana Wildlife Associ Association study, um, looking at the effects of the rising temperatures on our number two industry, which is recreation. Um, we're headed in the wrong direction, and um, when you add these costs, these external costs, um, to building more fossil fuel, fuel um, generators, it's clear that we need to move in a different direction toward renewable energy. And that um, if you look at the Montana Conservation Voters Survey from 2016, more than 90% of the voters they ask, and they asked over 500 voters, um, support increasing solar energy. More than 85% of the voters that they asked supported building more wind. Now, there aren't very many issues in Montana that, that develop a consensus like that. Um, so please bring these external costs into your um, calculations. Um, and please consider yourself holding public hearings on this billion dollar question we're going we're to have right now. Um, I would suggest that you use your powers of discovery um, to bring out the most important data and bring that to the attention of the media and to the average Montanans for you to be the, truly the voice of Montana consumers. Um, uh, we don't want um, this concentration of power that we see sometimes in our legislature to obscure what's best for Montana consumers. And I hope that you can help Montanans with this billion dollar question. And I hope we can get our power from um, sources that uh, really ensure um, the health and safety of Montanans in the future. Thank you. 
Hello, uh, my name is Carla Abrams. I came over from Missoula, Montana. That's A-B-R-A-M-S. And I'm going to keep this pretty short. Um, unlike my friend Patty back there, I don't have any history in Montana. I'm not a wife, I'm not a mother, I'm not any of those things, and I don't come from a ranching family. However, um, I did come to Montana for the beauty, for the work, and for people who care about, about the state and about how unique it is. So I come from a little bit different perspective. So I just want to say I appreciate the people who come here and all the very important statistics that they've brought and um, the care and the time that they've taken to research all this and to present to you the Montana Consumer Council. Uh, I'm a rate payer. I'm a consumer. Um, I buy my energy from Northwestern Energy. And as the man from Bonneville Power said, we need to keep our lines humming and our ass in Montana. So I want to make sure that we think about the importance of clean energy and the fact that the consumers seem to want it and the fact that uh, the Montana Consumer Council can influence this decision. And I'm pleased to have found out about the Montana Consumer Council, which was a, an organization I previously not heard about and have since read about. And um, I'm so glad that we were able to come and present here. So I'm hoping that uh, they will urge Northwestern Energy to, um, to look for rate cases, to, to compare the cost of coal strip versus renewables, and to ask Northwestern Energy for their exit plans, uh, like the other companies are doing for when coal strip is sunsetted. So I want to thank you for letting us present. And um, I think Montana is a great state. It's my adopted state, and I'm proud to live here. Thank you very much. I'm Brad Stacy. I'm from Plains, Montana, and I am with 350 Missoula. And I just basically want to say a personal note of how terrified I am of what I'm hearing and what the climate's doing now and what we are doing to it. Uh, it seems like every time I hear something about the climate on the news that it's happening quicker and more terrifying than we originally thought. Um, so, um, I would just like to encourage the state to move to 100% renewable as quickly as possible, even if the costs are high, looking at the cost of what's going into the planet um, seems to be much higher. Uh, and I appreciate this morning hearing that you are looking at prices on renewables and how to work them into the transmission lines, and I thank you for your work. Thanks. My name is Mary von Hoffman, and I live in Missoula. And I'm going to be very quick because I don't need to repeat what many of my friends have said. Uh, first of all, I am a ratepayer, and I am concerned about the future rather than looking towards the past. And to me, renewables is a no-brainer. It is the future. That's that's something that is not finite and is also clean. So. And I would like to read in, from the paper this morning, uh, in case you have missed it. Why is our Public Service Commission sitting on a number of wind power projects instead of supporting their installation as quickly as possible? Especially since many of the projects produce power far more cheaply than coal strip. I think that's a really good question to ask and answer. <laughs> I hope there's an answer to it quickly. Um, Again, towards the future aspect, I also read recently that a coal museum in Kentucky has recently installed solar panels on top of their building. <laughs> I think that is ironic and, and, and very true to where we are at right now. So thank you very much for hearing us. I appreciate that very much. Thank